Hi, my name is Kate Young and I'm an Associate Scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado. My primary responsibility here is to perform quality control on data collected from radiosondes. So today I'll tell you a little bit about what radiosondes are and then take you outside and show you how to launch your weather balloon. A radio sonde is a weather instrument that's carried up through the atmosphere attached to a weather balloon, like the one I have in front of me. These weather balloons are made out of a material called neoprene, which is a type of rubber, and when fully inflated, they can get up to 8 to 10 feet in diameter. Weather balloons are typically inflated with either hydrogen or helium. Both of these gases are very lightweight, so that when the balloon is released, it travels very quickly through the atmosphere. It can reach up to 100,000 feet. Radiosonde is a small, lightweight device that is um, encased in styrofoam and plastic. It's equipped with multiple sensors, including a GPS sensor, which allows us to track the location of the radiosonde in flight. It returns latitude, longitude, and altitude data, and from that information, we can figure out what the wind speed and wind direction are. The radiosonde is also equipped with a thermometer that measures temperature, a barometer, which measures pressure, and two hygrometers, which measure relative humidity or moisture in the atmosphere. The reason that the radio sonde has two hygrometers is that while the first is measuring the atmosphere, a second sensor is turned off and heating. This is burning off any moisture that the radio sonde may have come in contact with, say if it passed through a cloud. After a certain amount of time, the second sensor will kick on and begin recording data. The second sensor turns off and begins to heat. This toggling back and forth off and on between the two sensors allows us to get more accurate measurements of humidity. Radiosonde is also equipped with a radio transmitter that you see here at the bottom. This transmits the data back down to the ground where there's a receiver. The data then goes into a computer where, there is, where it's stored in a sounding file. Okay, let's go outside now and we'll do a weather balloon launch. Okay, so now we're outside and we're going to go ahead and do a radio sun balloon launch. Uh, this system here is a Suburban. It's our mobile glass system or Gauss system and it's mobile so that we can drive it around from location to location, launch balloons where the weather conditions are right. So I'm going to go ahead and inflate the balloon, attach the radio sun and then we will uh, we'll launch it. Our mobile system is equipped with a helium tank for filling up the balloon, a regulator that allows us to see how big the balloon is getting or how much helium is in it. And normally it's also equipped with a computer um, so that when the data transmits down back to the ground, it goes into the computer as it's stored into the sounding files. But today we don't have the computer system set up, so we're just going to show you what the launch looks like.
we tied the balloon off so that none of the helium can escape. Take the radio on. We attach it to the balloon. Now I'm going to remove a little piece of rubber which allows the unwinder to let the string swivel as the radio sun goes up in the air because you need the radio sun hanging quite a distance below the balloon so it's not affect so it doesn't affect the wind measurements. So let's walk over here right now and we'll release the balloon away from some trees. Okay. No plane. No plane. After the launch of the radio sonde, the weather balloon ascends through the atmosphere. It gets larger and larger and larger, and the reason for this is that as you increase your altitude, your atmospheric pressure decreases. The balloon can get up to approximately 100,000 feet up in the air, as I said earlier. This equates to about 20 miles up, and it can expand to between 25 to 30 feet in diameter. Um, at, after a certain point, the balloon can no longer expand and it will pop. The radio sonde will fall back down to the ground at approximately 30 meters per second. Um, occasionally, these radio sondes are found and returned, but in most cases, um, they're not found because they often come down in unpopulated areas. network of stations, approximately a thousand, set up all over the globe where they launch radio sondes twice a day. These radio sonde launches are coordinated so they occur at the same time. So for instance, since we live in Colorado, which is in the Mountain Standard Time Zone, our launches occur at 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. every day. Typically, the National Weather Service is in charge of coordinating the launches that take place in the United States and the data that we get from these routine launches is helpful in that it helps us better forecast weather and look at storm structures. to the routine launches that happen twice a day. Radio sondes are also launched during observational campaigns that we refer to as field projects. The goal of most of these field projects is to study specific atmospheric phenomena such as thunderstorms or tornadoes. During these field projects, multiple radio sondes are launched either from a single site or multiple sites, sometimes just minutes apart. The benefit of collecting these data is that it allows the scientists to look and see what's going on in the atmosphere at a certain time. These type of data from these field projects is what I look at. Um, typically it's just field projects <clears throat> that NCAR is associated with. show you here on the screen is an example of one of the soundings that we collected at a field project about a year ago. You can see on the screen the red line is the temperature measurements as the sonde ascends through the atmosphere. The blue measurement is actually the dew point which is a calculated value that we come up with after the, the fact. 
but the space in between the temperature and the dew point is actually a measurement of the moisture in the atmosphere. So the closer the lines are together, the more moist the atmosphere is. files that I examine after a field project um, sometimes contain errors or glitches um, where the instrument may have malfunctioned or the data quality may not be excellent. So that's why I go through and I look at each of these profiles to make sure that everything looks good. I then release the data to the principal investigators um, who coordinated the field project. In any one year I can look at around 500 radiosonde sounding files and every once in a while I get to go out and actually launch radiosonde balloons at various sites around the United States. Thank you now for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope that I was able to help you understand a little bit more about atmospheric science.